Uh, Shannon Blacker, who's one of our special education coordinators who works with both elementary schools and with uh, the middle school. Kelly Tobine, who's our school resource officer, does an outstanding job here at the Galvin. Uh, Lieutenant Calabrese, and then ball guy, Chief Smith. Um, so I just, and oh, I, I didn't really see Chief Sullivan hiding in the back. He's also a member of our uh, crisis team, um, and thank you for being here as well. Um, we um, just, just, I am not the expert on Alice. I'm, I'm going to be in the audience like you. We have people up front who know a whole lot more than I do about Alice. A year ago, I, I would have thought Alice was just the name, somebody's name. Um, and truthfully, I had never heard of it. I had been a principal, an assistant superintendent, but I had, never, I had never heard of Alice until Chief Smith actually introduced me to it um, now a year ago. Uh, what I've learned in a very short time is that, first of all, it's not a program. It's an approach. It's very important that we remember it's, we're not investing money in a program, but it's, it's a way of thinking and it's an approach. And I have to keep reminding myself of that. Um, and then the second thing I've learned is that it's, it's about empowerment. It's, what, it's about empowering teachers and students to make uh, good decisions in times of crisis. And uh, you might say, well, shouldn't they have been empowered before? Not with the way we've done traditional lockdown in schools before. They were not empowered. They were told to do something specifically. Uh, and no matter what was happening, they had to just follow what was written in the crisis plan that the school would have. And the third thing I would say very simply is that Alice makes sense. It's, it's, it's actual, it's rational, sensible, in the event of what we all never want to think about. I, I certainly lose sleep over it as you as parents, teachers do. Um, it, it actually makes a lot of sense. And as a father myself, I, I, I really hope that the schools my children go to also um, implement such an approach because I do, I want, I want people to be empowered and I want them to make rational decisions in times of crisis to protect themselves and above all children. Um, so how did we get tonight? So tonight we just cooked this up a week ago, but from, in, in about December of last year, maybe November, we relaunched the district crisis team um, and we meet on a monthly basis and there are representatives from every school uh, in the district, now including the Doyle School. We have um, police presence, we have fire presence, we have uh, department heads from the district that are part of the team, and we actually now have clergy, a, a representative from the Wakefield clergy on the team. And we meet, uh, like I said, once a month, there's about 20 of us that get together. Um, and our first, our, our, the first things we did last year was really look at every uh, school crisis plan of this year, we ensured that there was consistency in what every school had for a plan, because what we found is different schools had different names for things. It was uh, really all over the place, but with a team of people, we made sure that we had some consistent practices in place. Um, and then we also uh, revised our district crisis plan. We had one, but it hadn't been revised. We have some members of our staff that sit on the regional crisis team for, um, it's uh, called, what, what does STAR stand for? School threat uh, yeah, assessment, right. So we have members of our team that sit on that and we revise our own plan uh, based on that information. And as part of that work, uh, we discussed that our lockdown procedures were really inappropriate and outdated given what we had learned from um, critical incidents that, you know, uh, in schools and, and not just uh, uh, K-12 schools but colleges and other uh, incidents across the uh, country. And uh, the Wakefield Police shared with us um, that lo many local communities were introducing Alice. The governor's recent report also recommended that Alice be approached that schools uh, look into. And from that, this past spring, we sent uh, three people from the school district, the three that are sitting at the end there, to be trained in VR um, in district trainers. Um, and then we also, uh, the Wakefield Police sent members of their force to be trained in Alice. Um, and at the beginning of the school year, we introduced it to all our staff. Not a big formal um, introduction, but just to explain to staff that this was coming and we were going to be training them more thoroughly as the year um, was to come. And um, our, so our plan is to start with Wakefield High School. And you're going to hear more about that now and then to, to work with the Galvin, and then not to work with elementary schools until next 
school year. But we wanted to get the word out to the community before we started working with any of our schools. Um, and so I, a couple things I just want to pledge to you as we move forward with Alice. Um, we, our plan is to move slowly so we get this right. We're starting with our biggest school, school that, uh, well actually Galvin is the biggest school, but uh, Wakefield High is our, obviously our uh, school that uh, they have a very strong crisis team. We thought it wasn't appropriate to start with the Galvin first because it was a brand new school and we were still learning about to be a tenant in this new building. Um, so we, one thing is we plan to move slowly. Secondly, we, are, we definitely will tailor the training. The training for staff is the same, but the, the messaging to students changes depending on the age level. I think really have to be, what we would work with, what we communicate to high schoolers is not what we communicate to preschoolers or elementary school students. So I just want to be clear about that. Um, and that we plan to communicate with families in advance of any practices or trainings that are going to occur in schools. So just because we have tonight doesn't mean we won't be communicating with you uh, in the future. Uh, and, the, and finally, we, we really pledge to this to work very closely with Wakefield Police. Other school districts have moved, uh, have implemented ALICE without any partnership with police, which I just don't understand. For this to work, we have to be working side by side with um, the police department. And I, I'm, I'm thrilled at the opportunity that they have, uh, that they've been they have been just as engaged in this as the school system, and that speaks volumes to their willingness to partner with us, and really that they care deeply about protecting and, um, and school safety, which, as Chief Smith says, I believe our schools are safe, and they're safe, the safest places uh, that kids can be. However, we all know, and every day we hear reports of things happening in schools, we can never be too cautious as a school district. So with that, I turn it over to Lieutenant Cal Breeze, who has been the point person working with us on implementing Alice in our schools. It's going to be the teacher's or the faculty's decision 
whether they feel it's safe to evacuate or not. And that's not going to be an easy decision. We're not, we're not going to sell it as it is, as that is. You know, when we train the teachers, it's, it's going to be their decision. And they're going to have to base that on, on whatever knowledge that they have at the time. So Alice, it's, it's not a, uh, it's not a procedure, it's a set of general recommendations that fit each building and each grade level. A lot of the decisions on Alice will depend on, again, where the, build, where the room is in the building, you know, a, 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 a room that's right here, that's three steps from the door, is probably an easier decision for someone to think about evacuating as opposed to a, a room that's on the second floor that you might have to go down a few sets of stairwells to get out the door. Uh, so those are things that, that you're going to, you know, each, each building's different in each classroom. So the advantage of Alice are the integrated technology with common sense and human action, improves communication with law enforcement, provides options when information is available, and provides a plan of action to increase chances of survival, increase confidence, and reduce fear. And these are just some of the, not all by any means, but some that have recommended Alice. Um, you know, the Department of Homeland Security, uh, Chiefs of Police, NYPD, and most importantly, I would say, is the credibility of Governor Massachusetts School Safety and Security Task Force. That came out over the summer, and um, I think that's something that we're, we're pretty proud of on this end, is that we, as we said, we started looking at this about a year ago, and we, we had already had people trained and were already in the process of rolling this out when that report came out over the summer from the Governor's Task Force, where you know, some other school districts who haven't even started looking at this Maybe have to scramble a little bit more. You know, we feel that we're we feel that we're right on pace for what, uh, what the governor is recommending. One of the cases, one of the case studies that's important when we're talking about Dallas, and I think the best example is, is the Virginia Tech uh, shootings. And um, so, just some highlights: there were two separate attacks, uh, two hours apart. The shooter was a 23-year-old male. He created uh, you know, there was a lockdown. Unfortunately, got them that uh, time to load several times. Um, there were some significant uh, injuries at Virginia Tech. I know we have some young people here, so I'm not going to go probably not to go too much into the details. But some of the details are important. The, um, as you can see from this, several people were injured. Um, but the, the important piece to know with Virginia Tech is the classroom where students barricaded the door, kept loaded the ground, and used body weight to hold power, no one was injured at all. And we'll show you some more slides that will highlight that even better. This is, um, this is, this is where, this is kind of where you're going you're gonna to see who, who had the best you know, chances of survival in this, in this building. If you look up at room 206, that's where the shooting begins. Okay? Really nothing that goes, anyone in that room could have done. Somebody comes in the room and just starts doing what they're doing. Um, those, those, there was really nothing that they could do at that point. He then goes into two, room 207 and continues. What happens is the students in room 205 hear the gunshots, and they automatically go barricade the door. Um, and the gunman is unable to enter that room. And then um, room 211, they start barricading as, as the shooter's entering. But it's, uh, it's just seconds too late, and he's able to get in and cause further damage in that moment. Back in room 207, two of the surviving students barricade the door as the shooter att attempts to re enter. Uh, he tries but fails to get in that moment. So the barricade was successful in that one as well. Okay. Um, he then returns to room 211, and he's able to cause more damage in that one. Then he goes to room 204. The teacher braces the door with his body, and um, he's able to connect up with five out of 19 students. So that teacher was able to save a lot of lives in that room. Not, not all, but his actions saved a lot of students in, 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 that, in that classroom. So the important, you know, the important pieces of, of Virginia Tech, I would say, Okay, some of the, the 
um, the room where the room where the teacher um, barricaded the door, some of the students were um, were jumping out of the window. So they were able to uh, they were able to get up. So you have some, you know, there's barricading going on, and then you have one or two of them where the students were actually getting out the windows. Um, obviously, it's a five-story building, that's probably not gonna work, but if you're on a first floor or maybe even a second floor. That, that saved lives. So the, the main points of Virginia Tech, I would say are two things. Number one, the rules where there was either active barricading or actively trying to get out at the least amount of casualties. The second piece one would be, if you see the room where they attempted to shut the barricade the door, they were a couple seconds too late, and that, and that individual is able to get into that room, it means that the time matters. So in the sense of, well, you know, couldn't we just change, you know, train our teachers and not, not involve, really have to involve students in, in, in some of this stuff? I, I, I would say it's paramount that we do, because just the more help that, that some, some teacher who's trying to, you know, push a table and then push chairs and desks and all that stuff by themselves, going to take significantly longer than if they have help, okay? And that's why we really need to, we're trying to involve the classrooms, not just, not just the teachers. About active shootings, if they, if they are determined they will get in the building, passive and scouting targets become easy victims and compliance engages. Trying to get away from people just kind of huddling in a corner rather have them move, you know, and, and, and thinking about what to do next, rather than, you know, what, what we, some of the things we've done in the past. Why do they pick schools? I profile, you know, such as Mass Catholic please, uh, and traditionally low institutions. So they are high chances, it's a high chance of success. That's why they And in, and in some cases, of work, I mean, if you look at Columbine, I think everyone in this room could name one of those individuals that was involved in that. And, and that's what they want. That's why they can students. Because in their minds, they end up famous. And we, we try not to use their names in any of our presentations. So, is lockdown bad? Absolutely not. That's what the schools are doing now. It's absolutely not bad. And lockdown is absolutely a part of balance. But can it be improved? We believe it can. So the A stands for alert. Uh, it's basically anything that can be alert to a possible intruder. We want to use uh, plain language and then any available means to communicate. Whether they're trying to communicate to the uh, main office or they're trying to communicate to the police, we want plain language. Uh, what they found was a lot of a lot of schools in different areas were using codes like that. Uh, call it code 382 over the loudspeaker. Well, that's good for some people, but it's not good for other people who may be a temporary employee or someone who hasn't been through uh, training yet. So when you, when you start with the police agencies, in a lot of ways, they've got away from codes. So we're trying to use, they want you using plain language. So everybody in the building at least knows if you have a word lockdown, even if you haven't been fully trained in it, it's, it's more of a universal word than, than some random number. Lockdown, this is the L, L phase of the ballast. Needs to either secure the room or evacuate, lock the door, cover any windows or floor if possible. Obviously, you want to you know, maintain a seat. You don't want the individual to be able to see in there if possible. Um, and then we want to barricade, barricade that door after we lock it. Or if the door doesn't lock for some reason, because we know every, every sometimes you get a lock to work and sometimes you don't. What we like about Alice is it, it takes some of that, it takes some of that out of the equation there. If your lock isn't working, as long as you slide ahead of the desk and pass some, some things up in front of it, um, you know, your chances of success are going to be very high. Once your classroom is barricaded, then we want to remain vigilant and listen to the situation as it's evolving. Uh, we don't want people to be blocking the door and, and coming to the place and we want everyone to do These are just some of the examples of uh, what we need. 
know, demonstrating that that can be used for barricading. And, and it's it's really simple stuff. Door wedges that can protect the door, and then you can see after that, it can kind of evolve to desks, tables, whatever is in the room to you know, delay or completely prevent entry. Um, 
only 2% of the uh, violent intruder events have been by more than one parent person. That's something that we're going to stress to the faculty when they're trying to make these decisions about whether do I, do I leave, do I stay. Um, they have to keep in mind, we can't guarantee that there are three other people in the building, but we do have to, we do have to present the data that's out there. The data says that it's 98% chance that this is going to be one individual. So that's something that they need to think about when they're trying to make, unfortunately, hopefully never have to make these decisions. Um, and then the evacuation phase uh, will occur only if, if, only if they feel that it's safe to do so. The teacher's decision, if they do run out, we want them running in a, in a zigzag pattern. Again, we want a lot of movement. And if they do decide to leave, we want, to, we want them to bring something with them. Again, getting back to your point, ma'am, about when will we use this counter piece? If they are running through that hallway and they, they do, unfortunately, a face with this person, you want to have one of those things with you. you know, and it's very simple to pick up something on your way out. Um, we're, not, we're not asking them to push desks down the hallway, just anything. Any of these things can be a huge, huge help to them uh, if they're facing this kind of situation. And then, we're going to teach them too when they're entering to have their hands in the air. That's just more for law enforcement. It helps us. Obviously, it's going to be a very chaotic situation for police going in, and we want to be able to, the sooner we can define uh, good, 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 good people from bad people, the uh, better success we're going to have. So, key points of balance do not follow a set of actions that shall and must go through. They use one or two parts of the plan, or all five parts, so we can never get to all five parts. Empowers faculty to make best decisions for their students. And this also teaches skills that can be used both inside and outside of the classroom and all beyond the school age years. So we're trying to teach, so unfortunately, in the state age, we have to teach some survival skills. This is something that, that somebody may not use ever in a school system, but 10 years from now, they may use in a mall. I hope that doesn't happen, but we believe that these skills can be used beyond you know, the way to get public school. And um, that's, that's the end of my spiel. Um, if you have questions, uh, we'll, we'll have a question and answer part uh, following this. But um, some of the members of the district crisis team are going to come up and just talk about the implementation. So, thank you for your attention. Okay, so what we have done as a school district um, to prepare for Alice, um, as Dr. Swag said, we talked about the implementation at district and building crisis teams um, last year. In May, um, Janet and Brian and I uh, went to the training. There were several communities um, at the training. We were the only community where both the police and the school departments were represented, and I think that speaks to the relationship that we have with the police department that I think over the past six, how long have you been here, Chief? I'd say the past 11. I'd say over the past six to eight years, really, our relationship has really strengthened with the police department. And so, and I think having both of us at that training um, really was terrific. Um, so we attended the 16 hour training. It was simulated training. We had to do lockdowns. In the first lockdown, we could not do anything except shut the door, shut off the lights, and hide under the desks, and listen to this gunman who had, had a little pellet gun, a simulated thing, coming down the hall and sh shooting. And to hear him coming and be hunched under a table in the dock was pretty scary. And he came in the room and it was like, oh my God, here he is. And he came in and he shot the woman next to me. You know, so to I would never want to have students experience that kind of fear that even though I knew it was a simulation, it was pretty scary. So um, the training was terrific in terms of that for us. So, um, we've had follow-up meetings with our faculty, with the administration, with the police department um, during this past summer um, to plan for this implementation. Um, we are very excited that um, 
where you're going to be able to participate. So the implementation plan um, for Wakefield. So the Alice implementation schedule for the district was designed August of 2014. We said a couple times already. The high school is going to complete the implementation by the end of 2014, so the end of January. Um, and the middle school by the end of the 2014-2015 school year. And the elementary schools are scheduled to implement the ALICE starting next year, 2015-2016 school year. And the training is going to be consistent for all the staff and tailored to the students' age groups. So, and just um, being an elementary person myself, going to the training was very beneficial to hear the ways in which you teach the preschool children to grade four. They have examples, they have children's books, they have social stories, everything to go along with the instruction for the lower levels. Um, so it was encouraging for me to hear that because a lot of the questions come from, you know, obviously the, we're all nervous at every age group, but a lot from the younger level. So, you know, teachers will be trained in how to use all of these different techniques with their students. Staff will be trained, and those of us that are being trained will be helping those teachers as well. Um, and then, of course, parents are going to be notified prior to all of the student trainings that take place. So. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so, what I just an impressions in attending the six hour train, sixteen hour training, uh, attending the training kind of looked at it through the lens of a high school guidance counselor, uh, a member of our crisis team, an educator, but also through the lens. That I have um, two young children, um, as quite many of you have, um, one at the Woodville School, one soon to be at the Woodville School. And as I sat through the training, reflected how it's going to impact their lives, how it's going to uh, potentially burst their bubble of, of safety, and, and, and those thoughts and fears that, that you know, as a as a parent, it felt very, as uh, to share something that Dr. Wright mentioned, very empowered after of leaving that, realizing that this was not something drastically different, but really taking what we have been doing and adding in and empowering educators to make the best decisions for themselves and, for, and most importantly, for their students using common sense and um, adapting to the situation at hand. So um, some things, some takeaways from the program as, as well to reiterate what Shannon said, realizing that there's some really developmentally appropriate um, you know, curriculum out there for each grade level they went over you know, stories that they use at the uh, at the uh, earlier elementary grades, and really kind of building that in as a uh, a safe way to really kind of inform um, our our youngest students the uh, you know ways that they can look after themselves um, during a uh, you know difficult attention difficult time. But my part here is to talk a little bit about what we're doing here at Wakefield Memorial High at Wakefield Memorial High School over the next few months to implement Alice. Um, the first day of school at all school buildings, faculty and staff across the district were informed of the decisions to implement ALICE. Um, Let me at the high school to, uh, in large part, to uh, our co-chair of our crisis team, Jason Levine, who's a member of the NEMLEC STARS team, the regional STARS team was mentioned. We've been talking about this through our crisis team all through last year, so ALICE wasn't going to be a foreign concept. It was something that we had thought about and talked about. We've done some, you know, some research on in our own. Um, at our opening faculty meeting at Wakefield High School, our new principal, Rich Metropolis, who we're very lucky to have for many reasons, one of which is he has already been trained in ALICE and is very knowledgeable. He kind of led us, our, our faculty, in some initial um, information, kind of set the stage for what is to come. Um, at the end of September, when we have, um, every September we practice locked out with our students, um, we did a uh, you know, identify the practice of barricading, which is one piece of ALICE, using the data, the research we've seen from Virginia Tech and other um, situations to realize that just locking the door and going to a side spot isn't enough. Using what is in the classroom to, um, to barricade your classroom as part of the exercises we did during the training, we realized that barricading can be done in a matter of, of seconds not minutes, um, to really secure that classroom and ensure that when someone comes to that door, that they're not going to be able to get in 
um, very quickly, and odds are going to move on to another spot if they have um, um, difficulty. So it is amazing as an educator to realize each and every year how adaptive our students are. Our students took to um, the barricading extremely uh, easily. I, I would say that um, as a member of the crisis team who we went around and was checking rooms after we did this, they, uh, the rooms were extremely well barricaded. Um, in a very, very short amount of time, uh, our students are, um, I think, almost in some ways already there, but even ahead of you know, some of the teachers and adults in, in, in shifting our thinking and realizing this makes sense. It's common sense that you are going to take these steps to uh, ensure, ensure your safety if you're ever in harm's way. So that was an extremely successful um, exercise that we had taken two weeks ago. Just this past Monday, um, the Wakefield Police Department um, took us through uh, a similar pre a slide presentation that we're seeing today, followed up by a lot of active kind of Q and A from our teachers who raised some great points, um, and uh, you know stuff that we're gonna, information we're going to incorporate into a training for our entire student body that's going to take place for the end of this calendar year. We're going to go through some you know appropriate exercises on Alice. Um, Two parts I just highlight as an educator at the high school that I found has been such a value add um, from the ALICE program. One, the informed piece. Just as, as an example from our existing lockdown models, if there ever was a, a lockdown call, we would call a, call it a code red in the building. Um, but then that would be it. And, and it would lead people to you know, wonder what's kind of going on as they're sit, sitting and waiting um, for the end of this exercise. Now there's a, a huge push um, backed by data, um, which makes complete I think, common sense, to really inform and use plain language and give the most up-to-date language, um, i.e., if an intruder entered the building, the best practice now is to say there's a lockdown and there's an active shooter in the main hallway at the high school. That might give 30% of our building, which is downstairs on the first floor, a way to get out of the building. And um, you know, one of the things that initially it can serve me as this counterpiece, and as I reflected on it and realized, Alice actually is, de is deterring counter or those opportunities because students are going to be leaving, leaving the building out of harm's, harm's way. Um, we have a number of students that you know congregate in our cafeteria during lunch, and also during we have in our academic support centers. And those students see just this five benches here. I'm not going to be sitting around waiting. I'm I'm, I'm heading out and, and getting out as they should. Safety, I think, is just paramount. Um, as the kind of principal in, in Alice before, I thought there was also a piece of structure and staying accountable together, but now it's you know, making those best um, common sense decisions to, uh, to make sure that you're, uh, you stay safe, which makes a, a lot of sense. Um, so these are the things we're doing at the high school. Um, we're really excited to undergo this, uh, you know, uh, this process and, and well underway and look forward to you know, taking the data or working with not only members of our um, our crisis team, also community members, uh, highlight uh, Brian Garside, a, a, a school counselor at the Lincoln Public Schools, elementary schools, who came on early, early on and been through the Alice training and kind of sharing best practices, what they're doing in their district, and getting that information so as we kind of roll this out that we have the best uh, knowledge and best information to present to our students. So with that, I think uh, we're going to go to a question and answer uh, session, so uh, thank you for your attention. lockdowns twice a year.
no one has time to announce that. What do you do? Um, in this building, we are now set up so that no matter where you are in the building, you can pick up any phone in the building and make an announcement through the entire building. So in this building, communication is really state of the art. Um, at the high school, I would say just to, in one thought in addressing these questions, and I share those sentiments, as those, those concerns are some things I thought, and I've always come back to what would we have done in the old scenario. So any, there's a, a bunch of hypothetical situations that could happen in this reality, but any of those situations wouldn't be any different from our own, from the, the scenario, the BRAC protocol we had before. It, it feeling is there could be some scenario where someone came in and you know, the, the main office, they, that's, that's the first place that they went. Um, that, that's a reality. But that would have been a reality in any, with any recommendations or protocols. I think this, the data that's out there has shown this is the best, gives the, our educators students the best opportunity to stay safe. Similar to the middle school, there are other places in the, in the high school, the guidance office being one of them, where you can make an announcement over the walk and talk and get that out. So there's odds out there are several locations at the I'm hard pressed to find any hypothetical where there wouldn't be an opportunity to announce that to the school. Um, but that would be the same way it would have been previously. So. Okay. And then my last question, I know I said that one once, but if they do get out of the building, is there a main meeting place that they will congregate and you'll know who's where? Great, great question. And that's, um, there are relocation. Um, there is a relocate, be a relocation place designed in the building, but I, I would say, from one perspective, as an educator, outside the building, yes, I'm sorry, outside, the, outside, far away from the building, there is relocation, you know, uh, spots to uh, to go to, yes. And one thing I just think I, as a reflecting on Alice, that really uh, appreciate about this program is the first and foremost thing is everyone being safe. Uh, I think anecdotally, in other incidents, they were looking for students and accounting for them for hours around, but the most important thing is they were safe. They might not have been at the relocation spot, but they were at their house or they were out of the, out of the building. And um, you know, that evacuation piece, I think it's just a smart play you know, with Alice, from my uh, perspective. Okay. And then, as far as parents, I mean, I've only seen it on the news, but it seems like once you hear that, you want to be here because your child is in the schools. And the school, the way it's set up, I can see myself running to the field or to stand somewhere near the school. Like, I don't know, what do you want us to do? I think probably if we had an incident, you probably wouldn't be getting very close to us because there's so, be so many police. We actually have sketched out at our um, evacuation sites um, seven and eight go to the Civic Center, five and six go to St. Joseph's, into the hall, but there was a plan already designed so that we would accommodate parents. We have a whole procedure written out um, and all mapped out so we'd know just where our tables would go and um, have the information so that we would release um, students to their parents, so. Um, yeah, can I, can I just, yes. so from the district standpoint, our first priority is making sure that the children are safe. Yeah. So all our attention has to go first law enforcement if I've this wrong. But that's our perspective. As soon as we are able, then we will begin to send messages out to, to the community. But when, when there's an incident, even when we have small things that happen, our first attention has to be on ensuring that our students and staff are safe and safe and are like today we had to evacuate the building because of smoke and dull air today. The first thing we do is make sure that the kids were evacuated and then once they were back in the building, then we notified, we did notify parents as soon as we knew everything was uh, secure. So, uh, obviously people want information, and in time of crisis, thankfully I've never been through a uh, serious crisis, but our, what our training is, is about ensuring that we, we uh, support the needs of our, our staff and students first, and then we communicate out to the public. So, uh, other questions? Okay, a little comment here, sure. I think it's great that you have a collaborative effort with stakeholders. I, I see it all the time 
in, in jobs that I do and, and to get us here tonight to have buy-in to, to the procedures. I'm having palpitated just thinking about the whole thing, but I think it needs to be done. Um, so my props to you, and that's great. My comment is, um, you would be amazed. I, I have a job in which I go into the schools a lot, um, and then it's really tight after something happens, getting through the door. And I'm not saying Wakefield by any means, but you would be amazed at how far I can get sometimes walking right in, as opposed to some other school systems that I'm giving my finger, literally with my fingerprint, or, you know, it's a pain, but I appreciate the efforts, and I know the rationale behind it. So my comment would just be, moving forward when you have the, the crisis plan in place in Alice, is to, to never let go of that. And as you mentioned, it, when they're going to get in, they're going to get in, God forbid. But that you don't um, loosen the reins at that door or any door. Um, and this is what I'm amazed to still see in some of the schools that I go in. And I, and I would just say, I want to echo that. If any of you at any point feels like you, you enter a building and you're not questioned or it's you open the door, I, I am, I'm fanatical about the buildings, even after hours, being open. Part of it is my experience as an urban principal, but I, we get very lackadaisical, particularly after, after in, you know, we tighten up after an incident. We did last year after Danvers happened. But then we get very relaxed, and then I start seeing doors propped again. And then, you know, and people get frustrated. I have to say, I've encountered a lot of angry people who can't get into buildings late, later in the evening. I, I think we have to do whatever we can to secure our facilities. And as consumers, if you ha if something if you enter a building at any time, feel free to send me an email. I won't be offended. Okay, it's about we, we, we have to get better at this, and it just becomes human nature that we get lax over time. So thank you for coming that out. There's a question back here. There's a lot of talk about barricading the kids in the classrooms itself, which is great. But what if the kids are in the hallway and now all the doors are being barricaded? Like, how will you train the kids, or what do you tell the kids that are in the hallways what to do if they can't get into a classroom because they're being barricaded? Or they're in the bathroom. Like, what is the training for that, for bathroom procedures or them just being in the hallways? We'll do by grade level. How's that? Last week when we did our lockdown, it was five minutes earlier than we had planned, and so the gym class was just coming in. Um, so it was perfect because they just all ran into the learning commons here, and there's a, um, a closet in the back, and they just all ran into the closet. So um, for us, it's get to the, you know, stay in the bathroom, get to the nearest place you can be. Because if you're a teacher and you've already barricaded your room, it's, it's a tough decision. Are you going to unbarricade and pull that kid in because maybe the perpetrator is going to come? So we tell them to get to the nearest place that they can get at this level. Or get out. It's similar at the elementary level. Um, you know, if they're in the bathroom, we're gonna we're gonna say stay in the bathroom, and we're teaching we're gonna teach kids to barricade wherever they can get to get to um, to get out of the building if they can. Seek a safe adult that they know, like if they in their eyesight can get into that room if they can. Um, it's options. We're gonna teach them options, just like we're being taught the options. Questions? Are there any suggestions for kids who might have special medical needs? Like my daughter's a diabetic. Should she have supplies with her at all times? Does, does it last a long time generally? And just is, is there any advice about that? I defer, you know, to the Lieutenant also um, speak, but most, the data on most of these incidents is that and the police are gonna be here in the blink of an eye. Within two minutes, you know, this law enforcement is gonna be going to be here. Um, these incidents do not last, you know, a length of time. So don't, don't envision of your check center dog being barricaded for hours upon hours upon hours. I don't think that's a, a realistic scenario. So something that probably we don't have to worry about. Thankfully. We do take supplies if we have when we practice our evacuation. We go over to St. Joseph's and the Civic Center. You'll see us with our rolling suitcases. And we do have sugar and snacks in those suitcases. So that And one year we did have to evacuate for a um, Pipe bomb or something, and not that. And we sent someone to 7 Eleven to get something for the diabetic. So we, there's always some way to accommodate.
I just wanted to comment. I know um, Mr. Rockets, I know, is my daughter in junior high, and I can't tell you how much, not that she was excited, she wasn't, but she was really impressed and really confident in the plan that they did in their lockdown procedures to approach um, at the end of September when they did it. And she is a kid that is hypersensitive to this stuff. She doesn't like seeing it on any of the social media or any of that. She's just always been that way. But she had every confidence in the way that they, that they handled it. I've always had every confidence in the school system anyway, in the, in the police department, but I just wanted to share that. She, the way it went, she felt very comfortable more than I did even just reading through it already um, prior to them doing it, but it, it was handled very well. Thank you. Um, thank you very much. This is great. Um, hopefully we never have to use it, but question, was it a Wakefield decision to choose grade five as the cutoff or counter? Is this whole thing the way our system is set up? Part of it is our middle school starts in fifth grade. I, I think we didn't want to get different messages for some kids in the building um, because our, just if fifth grade were the elementary school, we probably would have kept fifth grade with the elementary uh, school age students. But we didn't want to teach different tactics to. Uh, you know, I, I think that would be complicated for a school to have one grade doing one, you know, one thing and another grade doing another thing. It keeps our training consistent. So different school districts do different approaches, but given the way we're structured as a system, it made sense to us. I don't know, Teresa. You know, No perfect cutoff point. You'll find that fifth grade is almost that cutoff point. Some are keeping it five down, but they're all in that same school, and some are just in fifth grade. So it's, I don't think that there's a perfect age where you know, students are ready or not ready. We just kind of develop that point. So keep it all the same, just train the same, the same building in that fifth grade. It seems to be that kind of that, roughly that. I will say though, because the fifth grade students do spend more time, they have two teachers that they spend uh, time with. The messaging, just like in elementary school, their relationship with their key teachers is so important. And so, so much of the messaging and the, uh, the support for this has to come from their teachers. And we talked a lot in our last meeting about elementary, we have elementary teachers representing, they, they talked about how important it was for them to talk with their class because of the, the relationship that they had. Instead of bringing the whole school into an auditorium, which feels less personal, because as many of you know, with elementary school students, their their connection to school is their classroom teacher. And in fifth grade, that that as they get older, that becomes less and less because they have multiple teachers. So so much of this depends on our talent and staff, and, and so that's why the training for them is so important because of, uh, kids, the way that kids react to this is going to be dependent on how we get us around them on message message. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Right. I think I heard earlier that there were two um, there are two long term drills for the students and the staff. Is there additional there or I guess I have two questions. One is is that enough training for the, the students or I know you don't want to take time away from classes and the kids, um, but is that enough time? And then also, do the staff have additional training and just to kind of reinforce it so that it's more natural to make it happen? We are looking, we, we have set a minimum this year for two lockdown drills, but that's not, we're, knowing that we're still not fully into Alice, obviously some schools are coming on board this year. Whether that's enough or not, I, I don't know. I think that's something we're going to continue to evaluate. Uh, so, so that's your, that your first question. Your second question, in terms of the staff, they do get, there is separate training for the staff, but each school also has their own crisis team that meets on a regular basis. And one of the things we're trying to get better at is when it's, if they, they're supposed to report back to the district team on where they might need more guidance or support. So if they're struggling with, with the implementation of this, we, we will learn about this at our monthly meeting and give them more, um, you know, we can give them more support. Guidance. So it sort of depends. Some schools' teams are a little further ahead than others and have been more well-established. Obviously, like the Royal School is brand new, 
So they're starting to get their team off the ground. They're going to need a little more support than some, some of our schools that have had really well-functioning teams uh, for a long time. But the nice thing is everybody is at the table, um, and uh, they can give us feedback on, you know, we obviously can't be all seven schools at once, but we can get feedback about where they're concerned. So like, people ask questions about lock, you ask questions about shades, that's where they come back and say, you know what, we've got issues, this lock doesn't work in this classroom, or, uh, you know, we, we uh, you know, school-specific issues around the support and staff. You mentioned that the high school did a really good job with the barricade, and, and I trust that the middle school will do a good job. Then you get to the smaller school, and you have smaller kids trying to move desks and whatnot. So it would seem, to her point, that there's got to be gadgets that are easily accessible and, and small and light, and can help the teachers be more quick, to be quicker to barricade themselves when necessary. So you probably have this all figured out. So one of the things that we've done as part of the crisis team is that we notified all the buildings um, to how to set up their classrooms appropriately, what to have near a door, what not to have near a door. Um, and also something that I'm going to be doing is going around to all the different elementary schools and teaching them some of these barricade techniques, the easier ones with the belts and with the, the ropes. So we, we have thought about all the different ways um, little things, you know, that they've taught us in our training that we're going to share with the teachers that also, you know, are easy for even, you know, a third, or fourth grader, second grader. Maybe, you know, first and kindergarten, preschool is going to be a little bit more tough, but third and fourth graders, you know, sliding a chair over to the teacher who's going to be out the door doing something. So we are planning to roll this out slower to the elementary levels for those reasons because it's a, a little bit more training to go into the teachers there. Like this. You push out, Jumping and getting out, you can't get out of some hair, through your door, whatever reason, you need to get 
out the window, and of course, you know, not all the schools and others set up, but some of the second floors and higher that would be very dangerous. From what we've learned from fire departments about securing the house and having it ready for fire, if you get out the window, use a sheet, use a rope, use a rope ladder, would it be a crazy idea to start thinking about equipping maybe some of those higher level floors for classrooms? Is it something that would be a possibility then to escape the window? Is you know, obviously down the stairwell is probably the safest way, but I don't know, it's a crazy idea. Well, I think that you know, the goal, if, if you're on a second or third floor, we're going to focus on barricading and, and jumping out, jumping out windows. That could also apply to the fire, you know, if, you, if they needed to. So any of that stuff that you're talking about isn't, isn't necessarily a bad idea. Um, but I don't think, if we were in the type of situation that we're talking about tonight, we would, we would stress barricading. And the only reason why those people were jumping out because that person had, had gone in. Oh. And we are trying to, we don't want that person in. Hit. We want them focused on the barricade. But like you said, we have to, we have to, we do have to plan for those other things. And that's part of the reason why we want to talk to the teachers about all the things that we're talking about tonight, like when you're setting up your room. If you want your desk a little bit closer to that door, so you don't have to slide it 20 feet across the room. Maybe it would be good to have some type of cord in the room that you didn't have before that you can use to hold the door shut. Or maybe you should have possibly something that you could go down, like you're talking about, a little bit ways if you have to get out. So we're going to try to stress all these things to the teachers to be, to be thinking, when you look at your classroom, what's my best setup for, for a lockdown? Or, you know, time. We really want to get the, the faculty thinking about that. That's, that's crucial. Question here. Yeah, uh, knowing that every second counts. If somebody did enter through the back, what signifies and signals a lockdown? How does it get spread throughout the whole school? We've told the teachers that if they, to always be vigilant, even if they see somebody outside, you know, to call. So their instructions are to call the office immediately. But now that we have the system where you can pick up a phone in any classroom, a teacher could pick it up and say there's an intruder in the hallway. Does that immediately call the police? Does that immediately call the police? Yes, we immediately call the police. Yep. You can call 911 from any classroom in the building. So we would have, that's what the teacher's been told to do. You know, also to, to reinforce that our buildings are secure um, every day and all um, people entering the building after 7.30 have to come through the main office. You know, our, our, but it's that doors are instructed not to open the door for anyone they, they don't know. Of course, you never know what potential scenario could happen, but uh, and we do the best we can to try to direct and shepherd traffic up through the main office to ensure that wouldn't happen to the best of our ability. cameras in all the hallways, we have cameras on all the doors. Um, we have a system where if there is an intruder that um, the system can lock down the building so that the hallway doors like to the fifth grade wing and to the stairways that go upstairs, those automatically will lock. The elevators will be shut off. Yes, Kim? Yep. So, and that can all be done from um, the main office or from, they're putting it on all the administrators. Um, devices that we carry around, so um, so this, really this building is state of the art, I think in terms of security. Um, the police department was very involved in developing the security for this building, so we do have um, those systems in place here. We're very fortunate. Yes, I have a question. These two gentlemen made a good point. Um, are you going to be adding any kind of security to the other schools as a panic button, since they're not the newest ones out? Or if... Um, if somebody breaks in, are they going to be able to, you know, distract them by turning on the sprinkler system so they can't actually see the kids that well and maybe kind of, you know, deter their vision from finding people? Is there any way we can do that? Okay, no, I saw, I mean, those are things that we talk about all the time. 
conjunction with that, please, uh, the town has a uh, it's been a support our school with the security bu uh, budget every year, uh, capital, and uh, we those are things we are talking about. Clearly, we have a state of the art building here. It's the only building that has cameras anywhere. We don't have cameras in other buildings. That's one of the things we're talking about. Whether you know even outside of buildings, we don't. Uh, you know, I, I, one of the concerns I have is some of the elementary schools that there are there's pretty dark areas there. And, so that's we're discussing about that in terms of panic buttons. That's another thing that we've uh, talked about. And, you know, it's it's pretty quick now with people having cell phone being able to access uh, contact 911. Although we do have issues of cell coverage in, at the high school. If you drive to Farm Street, you know because your calls drop, right? So that's one of the things we are talking very closely about with uh, the town. So issues um, like that. For the, for the yeah. Absolutely. I think those are, that's, we're not where we need to be with all that state-of-the-art technology and all the buildings. So uh, it's, those are, those are things that resources become available and new technologies develop. The other thing that we've talked about is how we make sure that we can easily lock doors from inside classrooms. Because in the case of an intruder, you really can't then get, you don't want people leaving the room, locking the door, and coming back in, right? Somebody brought up that, uh, over there and brought up. There are, that's another thing that other school districts have invested in, is the ability to lock from inside so you don't have to go. Unless the door is locked and you shut it, but we don't, we don't lock all our elementary school doors. So if you pull it shut, it's still available to be open from the outside. So that's another thing we are thinking about as a school system. You know, as a school system. And clearly we have old buildings, but that's a little harder to do than the gift that we just got in the out. I just wanted to make a comment as uh, serving as a co-chair of the district, uh, the high school crisis team, uh, just and also on the Memlock Stars team. How proud I am of the district, uh, not just for uh, our pursuit in implementing Alice, but because of how we're doing it. Uh, many districts uh, I, that I've seen have say, "Okay, you know, we're implementing Alice. We're all set." And what I really respect about how uh, we, have, as a district, have really approached it is that it's been an active conversation the entire time, uh, like that was said, between the district and police and, and faculty about how to adapt it, how to make it what's needed uh, for Wakefield, not just a canned uh, program that applies to everyone, how is it specific to our buildings and to our community. We'll, uh, we can stick around and we'll have questions after as long as you want. I, I would just also highlight that uh, we do have another presentation in a couple of weeks on cyber safety that uh, we're we'll putting out. Uh, we've had people, uh, we have Middlesex, the Middlesex uh, Partnership for Youth, which we work very closely with, it, are coming out to do a presentation in Wakefield about uh, uh, cyber safety and cyber bullying. And uh, we'll be at the Galvin, I think the first week of November, where we'll be sending out information spread that as well. And through this process, if you have any questions, feel free to email myself, uh, the, the principals at your child's school. Can I give them your email address too? Okay. Feel free to email them. Not your cell phone. Uh, you can certainly email the police as well, but we promise to communicate with you, and if you have any concerns about it or your children reporting uh, you know, concerns, please uh, keep us uh, informed. All right. Thank you, and have a uh, wonderful night.